he's an interesting guy, man. And, uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously, under heavy, heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you must be glued to the monitor watching NASA's latest released footage, which is chock full of great things like Velcro and quick edits and people lens footage it's awful it's terrible anyway for those of you listening to this on youtube and you want to hear the show live as it happens please go to truth frequency radio for the latest schedule currently this show is on tuesday nights at 7 pacific 10 eastern and if you are listening to this right now and it is not tuesday night uh, you can call in the phone line but unfortunately it's going to go to voicemail i will listen to those voicemails but you will not get in live you have to listen to the show live to actually get in that's just how reality works. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. Science is built up of facts as a house is built of stones. But an accumulation of facts is no more a science than a heap of stones is a house. And that's from Henry Poincar, P-O-I-N-C-A-R, a French mathematician, theoretical physicist, engineer, and philosopher of science. A couple announcements before we get to the phone calls. Hopefully they're going to work before the break. We'll try. I'm using a brand new modem and bigger bandwidth and all sorts of other fun stuff. The Jeffrey Gutt Challenge is still in effect. Any of you out there in academia, and this is the first phone call. You know what? I'm not going to take that yet until I get the announcements out. I get complaints if I if people say, oh, you can't cut cut off stuff just because the call's coming in. 818, I swear to God, I will pick you up next unless you're second in line. Calls are picked up in not really the order they're received. They're just picked up whenever, whatever I see on the screen. Just grab them. Anyway, anyone in the academia world, and that means you got to have really – you got to have a master's degree or higher in something. A physical science would be great, geology, hydrology, biology – astrophysics, general physics. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to debate, you want to do a serious scientific method debate, I got a guy lined up for you. I mean, if you want to go against me, that's fine. But I, I think you'd be selling yourself short because I got a guy who's uh, got a big, big brain stuffed in an even bigger head. His name is Jeffrey Grupp from Zeteticism.com. Yes, I'll throw peanuts at you if you hang on here. If you miss announcement, says the peanut gallery. That's funny. It's funny. It's good. The Flat Earth Big Money Challenge. I think it's up to 25 grand. Anyone who thinks they can prove that we live on a globe right now, please email Kathy Dunson, who is also tied to True Frequency Radio in the effect that she does Secrets Revealed with Zen Garcia. 
You can email her at perilandra77 at gmail.com. That's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com, and she will give you all the details. You guys probably noticed the new music at the front. It's also by Chip Baker, same guy that did the last one with the Warriors soundtrack. This is done with, if you're, if you're old enough to remember, the original Dune movie back in the day, early 80s. That's a quote from, from Dune, which I thought was kind of cool. Very kind of loosely tied to the whole flat earth thing. How were this hidden, hidden group underneath the surface? There's millions of us out there. Absolutely. No question at this point. Got to remember, if it's only 1% of the United States population, even if it was just 1%, and I know it's more, that's, that's 3 million people right there. I know there's more than that. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. We're going to give it a shot, and hopefully it'll work. Again, new system. This has nothing to do with TFR. This is totally my side of things. Hopefully I got everything set up right. I just did it this afternoon. In the meantime, though, we're going to do some emails. First email it's called NASA 666 Days. Mark, on CBS News Today, and this is back on the 24th of April, NASA announced that astronaut Peggy Whitson broke a record of 534 days and will return in September after being on the ISS 666 days. Gee, she couldn't stay an extra day to make it 667? How convenient for the Satan-worshipping space agency who always lies so blatantly. Please read this and give out my email for anyone around Billings, Montana, who wants to meet up. Thanks for all your work, Bill Nolte. Not to be confused with Nick Nolte. And his email is saborg9 at gmail.com. I'll spell it for you, S-A-B-O-R-G-N-I-N-E at gmail.com. So if anybody's out in Billings, Montana, you want to get together with somebody for coffee, talk about flat earth, and really spook all the globalists around you, there's your guy right there. This one's called Flat Earth Considerations. Hi, Mark. I have only just begun believing in the flat earth about six months ago, but I was skeptical all my life pretty much. For instance, I once asked uh, on Yahoo Answers, why is it hotter on the equator? For if the sun is 90 million miles away, surely the rays traveling 1,000 to 2,000 miles further, presuming round earth, is minuscule to affect temperatures so dramatically. Temperature of the in the UK, say, is 12 degrees Celsius, which for argument's sake is 90 million miles away from the sun. Yet in Egypt, temperature at the same time is like 35 degrees Celsius. And it's 89.999, you know, it's very, very close, 89,999,000 miles away from the sun. It does not make sense. Too much distance for too much discrepancy. Anyway, here are my considerations. We are told such things like space is a vacuum, and you can't have combustion, therefore no thrust, and also the temperature of space we are told, and we use these things to disprove space travel. But I presume we are told these facts from NASA. So to use data given by NASA against them seems counterintuitive. Co counterintuitive. You can't have it both ways. You can't say that any data we have is fact, if they lied about the moon landings, we must presume they lie about other things. So to cherry pick data that supports flat Earth is redundant because we can't actually verify that the ISS is subject to temperatures. My pizza goes through to get cooked. It's funny. Also, with the billions they have received, is it not possible they have figured out a way on Earth to simulate weightlessness on Earth? Hyperbolic flights for 40 seconds at a time does not explain the length of clips shown, which lasts for minutes in one take. For instance, strong magnets using electricity makes a Bluetooth speaker. I have float. Maybe they wear magnets on their, on their nappies, or perhaps it's some other technology, but it's no leap in imagination to presume they have the means to make crap float on the in air on Earth, maybe they ex extract nitrogen out of the air in a chamber, which causes it, whatever they do. They do it fairly well because they have convinced the masses very well. My point is that to disprove claims cannot rely on any claims about space if we can't verify them ourselves. Cold hard facts are preferred over speculation. And that was sent by nobody. It was, it was unknown. And yeah, if you're listening to this right now, since that email you sent, and I'm trying to catch up on emails, it's really tough, guys, but keep sending them. You'll probably notice the, the fantastic video that was put out 
uh, on my channel and DITRH's channel and Globuster's channel. Where ever, it's basically CGI. It's green screen. The screen. It's live green screen uh, masking and overlaying, which is really, really great. They, they made some huge blunders with live footage. I never recommend anybody that's doing an operation to do live footage. I don't care if you're talking to school children or not. It is tough to do. It, it, there's a reason why you do 99.9% uh, .9 of your work in post-production. You try to do it live. It's not the technology that fails necessarily. It's the humans doing it. You're going to make mistakes. Software is released Nowadays, we all have seen it, you know, the, the top of the line operating systems still have massive bugs. Top of the line games still have bugs. And that is the pressure to get them out there. It, you, you, there's only so much polish you can put and there's only so much testing you can do. So check that out if you get a chance. Yeah, all the stuff. Uh, initially, I thought, you, yeah, you can do a lot of it with the zero G planes, but even a bigger amount of it now is done with green screen. So check out the videos out there. There's a whole bunch of them recently. And uh, the, the in fact, the one that I put on my channel, and I can't remember the guy's name. Hang on one second. I'm just going to look it up real fast. Uh, where is the name? What is the name? Hey, Peanut Gallery, help me out here. What's the name of that video I just put out that I from another guy? Oh, there's 831 area code. Let's try to find them, see what happens. I'm going to add them. Hopefully, I do not lose the station. If I do, well, we'll fix it in editing, shall we? Have I completely cut myself off? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Dead. Dead air. Awesome. Am I still dead? I'm still dead. Back. Now I'm back. Okay. Apparently, what happens is when I try to pick up the call, the station just gags on me. I don't know why. Maybe I'll have them reboot something on their side. Well, we're going to read another email in the meantime. Let's try 443. We'll give this one more shot, guys. I know I'm a glutton for punishment. We're going to give this one more shot. And if it doesn't work, I will have the uh, stuff have change at the uh, at the server level. You are on live with Strange World 443. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. I don't know <laughs> what it is. The first caller always seems to just get blown. Wait, are you the guy that uh, that killed my show like twice? Nope. No. Oh, okay. Good. The other four, four, three. All right. Hey, anyway, what? Uh, where are you? Where are you calling from, man? Uh, uh, I'm actually in Houston right now. Right on. What's uh, what's what's your take? How long have you been in the flat Earth? Well, uh, <laughs> I think I discussed this previously, but oh, did you? Uh, like I said, you got me into it. I hate you. <laughs> didn't you say that last time that you hated me for doing no, this no I didn't I did not say that okay so now you hate me though no I don't I don't hate you it was it was sarcasm I know but, I know I know yeah, I got you if you if but, you actually uh, hated me you would have been swearing a lot more <laughs> yeah of course I was I was a guy who noted you about the draft and uh oh right yeah yeah, yeah. Oh that. yeah! By the way, the video. I, let me real quick. The peanut gallery. Just let me know the video that I wanted to mention to the guy that was that emailed me. It was called the fake NASA ISS interior: a technical breakdown by Mike Helmick, H E L M I C K of the same name YouTube channel. So that was okay. it. Thank you, thank you, peanut gallery. And eight three one. You can try again, but you're gonna have to wait till this phone call's done. Anyway, what's on your mind, man? What are we, what, what's going on? Dude, I, I mean, I've been tuning into your show for the past few weeks. And, I mean, I'd watched a bunch of your interviews before. And, I, like I said, dude, I definitely appreciate everything you're doing. Cool. And, uh, but, okay, this is this is what I wanted to call you about. Mm -hmm. So, I've come up with a saying for time travel. <laughs> when I was, That's a great yeah, saying. Okay. All, right, all, right, all right, hear me out. Okay. Right, hear me out. All right. I like time so travel. When I when I would ask people about time travel, whether they believed in it or not, yeah. uh, I would I would say that if time travel was ever real, yeah, it's real now. Yes, right. Dif different books so, have talked about that, about that, and that is once it was invented. If it is real, then it's yeah, it's already happened. Yep, I know what you're going. Yeah. Cool. Well, I haven't read any of those books. So okay, I, I'd like to think I came up with that on my own. Well, in effect, you did. <laughs> but yes, it it is one of those time travel logic things, and that is that there's other right. people that have said that you can't go, you can't go any further back 
than when the machine was invented. There's other people but that, that doesn't say. make any logical sense. No. Because if you can time travel, you can time travel. You can't tell me and nobody's going to go back to. Uh, yeah, basically, you're saying you could you could only go forward, which I disagree right. with as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's not time travel. Yeah, it's it's you know. That's now, if you went, if so you I'm went, just wondering. I'm I'm wondering. Yeah. Have you thought of any expression such as that? that could, you know, uh, have flat earth involved. Uh, and um, I've been trying to, th- I've been really trying to think of something really great that would. Not, not yet. You mean, that, tie, you mean like a flat earth quote that's tied to time travel? No, 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 no. I mean, just logically, because logically, if you can time travel, you can time travel. So therefore, if it exists ever, then it exists now. So if flat Earth was ever flat Earth, then what would that quote be, so to speak? I don't know yet. I, Me neither. I, I mean, I, I, I'd have. I am it's, trying to think of so many things. Like I, I, I've been. Man, I'll tell I mean, you what. I will tough. put it. I will put it to the listening audience, and I will think about it in the meantime. But do this. Email me that exact question, and I because I, I'm not going to be able to do it on the fly. I can come up with some creative stuff, but it's going to take me yeah. take me a little while. I mean, I, I've I've come up with like if flat Earth is true, then well, see Don't. that's the thing. It's like if if gyroscopes are real, then yeah. flat Earth must be true. That's the closest thing I've come up with. But there's there's a lot i know you're, it's hard man it's you want to come, you want to come up with a new meme uh, look there's a lot of memes. no 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 i i don't do memes bro well know. that that is kind of a meme though what you're what you're talking about if i, I mean I, honestly okay. you, you, I, that thing about yeah. the gyroscope thing that's that's a meme right there all you have to do is put some cool little graphic for, of a gyroscope overlay it on top of a flat yeah. earth I map guess, I guess that's not my forte that's all right but you know, I mean, but the, the thing I came up with time travel is, you know, if time travel is real, then it exists now. And and that was the biggest debate I got into people about time travel. They're like, oh, no, it won't, oh, we don't have time travel now. I'm like, dude, you're just logically. <laughs> oh, no, I hear you. I look, I, I love time travel movies is one of my favorite things. But I could I yeah. could talk about that's a whole nother episode. Because there's yeah. so many cool little time travel options out there, and like Bruce Willis said in Looper, he goes, you yeah. know, before you know it, you know, he goes, we start to comparing this and and start drawing things. Next thing you know, you're you've gone crazy because <laughs> you got to. St- unfortunately, you have yeah. to follow one plot line all the way to the end. Otherwise, you're going to jump around. Yeah. Geeks, but geeks, I, and super nerds love to debate time travel stuff. Yeah, and uh, I mean, how do you personally? How yeah. do you feel about it? About time travel? Yeah. Oh, I absolutely believe in it, but it's right. for, for me, it's one of those things where if somebody goes back and changes something, they it depends if you believe in alternate timelines. If you believe in alternate timelines, then you we're living no. in no, no, there's no ultimate timelines. Eh. Uh, Opinions vary. When it comes to that, I mean, you're living in one, but how do you know there isn't another one? That's true. That's uh, that's very but, true. But I but I do agree. I agree. That. I do agree. Hate hate to do this to you because honestly, I could talk about time travel s- stuff forever. But the the phone lines are lighting up. I any any shout outs you want to you want to give before I yeah. s- send you off? Shout, shout out to you. Oh, that's awfully nice. <laughs> you no, to... man, you're great. I I appreciate everything that you do and. uh I just wanted to pick your brain about that. I heard you're getting some invalid callers, so I want to call in. Oh, sure thanks, man. That's right. awesome. Thank you. You may have, you may have sim- simply just by calling in, you may have fixed my phones. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. We'll I, hope so. I hope so. All right, Mark. Later. Hey, you have a good one. You too. Bye bye. All right. Phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. All right, we're going to try. It looks like it's a long-distance call. I don't know what country code 6-1 is, but let's find out. 
You are on live with Strange World right now, and I do not recognize that country code. Where are you calling in from? Uh, Sydney, Australia. Australia. Hey, wait. We talked. I've, Australia. I've, I've talked to you before, haven't I? Uh, no, not me, mate. Oh, okay. I've, I've, tried, I've, I've left you a couple of voice messages, but I never got on, Mark. <laughs> So what's uh, what's going? What wait? Well, first off, just to blow people's minds, what time is it, and what day is it? Um, it's Wednesday afternoon, just after twelve at the moment in, wow. in Australia. Just nice. having some lunch, mate. Nice, nice. What's uh, so? What's yeah. on? What's on your mind? You're listening to TFR down um, in Australia. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got this um, this friend that works for Telstra. It's our, our pretty much the main um, telecommunication service mm-hmm. in Australia. It's probably um, like the yeah, equivalent to A&T and T over there. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was telling me that um, all international calls um, go through submarine um, cables, like fiber optics that go from continent to continent. Nice. So, um, like, a, yeah. So yeah, he's been work. He, they told him that apparently in the 80s they um, they stopped using satellites because it was so expensive, and they've only got about a 10 year or 15 year lifespan, so they stopped using them. Really? And, uh, yeah, went, went submarine cables. Yeah, apparently. And that's, so yeah, that's, and that's, that's a, how I'm talking to you right now. That's a that's a good cover story too, because wow, I mean, you know, by uh, in the '80s, that was 40 years ago. So now, pe- no one would yeah. even question it. It's like, oh yeah, we're, we're not using satellites anymore. It's like, really, really? So you're laying underwater yeah. cables for everything? It's brilliant. Yeah, exactly for everything. There's thousands of kilometers of ca- or hundreds of thousands. Yeah, the the, the first um, submarine cable is actually laid in. In 1850, for um, the the telegraph lines. Wow. So um, yeah, yeah, wow. from 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 England to to India, and then India to Australia by 1870, I think it was. Yeah, so it was instant communication back then. That's fantastic. Pretty, pretty so nice. your your friend in the in the industry, I mean, is he basically hinting that the entire industry, like no like no calls out of Australia, go bounce off? No calls at all. Nothing at all from from. Uh, like international calls goes to satellites. They're all through fiber optics because fiber optics are so much quicker. I think um, they're putting in a new one from Australia to uh, Tiago Garcia and then onto Africa to link up with Europe. Wow. That's going to be, I think, a hundred. I wrote it down somewhere. It's about, it's about 180 terabytes per second. Wow. Um, kind of capacity. Yeah. And and apparently, I was, I was looking up satellites. The fastest satellite they've ever made is 134 gigabytes, so it's about a thousand times quicker than. than yeah, any, and and and, any and of course, science, scientists and scientism will come back and say that well, you know, it's a speed issue, so we don't have to use satellites anymore. But if your guy is saying what he's what I think he's saying, look, if he's saying that they dropped satellites back in the freaking 80s, I mean that was mm-hmm. been, that was when you know satellites had way more you know if you believe in the bandwidth we should have had way more bandwidth right I mean fiber optics yeah that should have yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah, exactly. a, ter- a ter- terabyte wasn't even a word in the eighties so <laughs> wasn't even a word actually it's, actually gigabyte wasn't even a word in the eighties come to think of it <laughs> it was kilobyte so yeah. that's fantastic. And also the- yeah, the Go first ahead. the first communication satellite that was put up that was that was actually a balloon. It was the Echo One back in nineteen fifty nineteen sixty was the first communication satellite, and it was actually a balloon. Nice. I looked that up. Yeah. And if it yeah. worked, why would you just keep okay. launching balloons? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why, yeah. why not? <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's awesome. Good to talk to you, Mark. Yeah. No. I uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much for calling and. Uh, if you have any more little tidbits down the line, just let me know. Feel free to definitely to call into the show. Yeah, we'll do. I've tried to call before, but yeah, I haven't got on. I think you've got the time difference is wrong, but yeah, I finally worked it out now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's perfect, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, right, hey, see, Mark. Have all a right, good one. have a good rest of your good rest of your afternoon in Australia. Thanks, mate. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right, everybody. Phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. And if you call in now, I just may hold you through the break. Uh, there's 203. Let's see what happens. Nope, and 203 hung up. <laughs> it's like I scared him off just by looking at it. Looked at him, I was like, why are you calling in 203? I hate you. No, I don't really hate him. Uh, Peanut Gallery, nothing from him. He's just listening. He's probably drinking or something. 
Uh, let's see if I can read an email real quick. Oh, there's two or three. Oh, address the Eskimos. You know what? Uh, two or three, you're going to have to wait. I got to address that real quick. The uh, the Eskimos comment was because I don't hate any group. So the TFR chat said, thought you were a decent type guy, not not KKK. No, I am not a white supremacist in any way, shape, or form. In fact, the Eskimo reference was just to my point. That is, look, I hate the Eskimos. And I don't really, but I'm using them as an example. I hate the way they dress. I hate that they club seals. I especially don't like the way they make dan- dangerous homes made out of ice. I think it's a hazard to children. Does my hatred of the Eskimos have anything to do with Flat Earth? No, it doesn't, which is why I'm trying to say, in fact, if you're into Flat Earth, you should be open-minded about everything and every culture. If I had a genie bottle and I wished the Eskimos away, would my hatred be done? No, I'd probably just pick another demographic. So that's what I'm trying to say. Anybody out there that targets another demographic, I don't care if it's gender or race or color, race and color, it doesn't matter. Don't. Pick another group. I don't care who it is. I picked the Eskimos because they're the smallest group I could even think of. And just to just to let people know that it to make a point that it's stupid to hold on to grudges like that. If you're truly into flat earth, then you're truly open minded. And if you're truly open minded, you're tolerant with every culture. Look, we're one big family here. One big group. So deal with it. And uh, we can't get along I you know, doesn't mean you have to be best friends with them. But it doesn't mean you should also target them and wish that they were dead. That's just me, though. Anyway, we'll come back from the break, and we'll pick up where we left off. You guys know the number, don't you, by now? Do I have to say it again? I'll say it when we come back. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. I'm your host, Robert Paulson. No, no, I'm actually Mark Sargent. But on the line is another Mark, Mark from New York. Are you there? Hello. Hey, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How you doing? <laughs> you, know, you, know, so, you know, to be so formal, man, I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. It's, awesome. It's, awesome. it's been nutty in the flat earth lately. Uh, there's, yeah, it has. there's so many hangouts that on, on a it's, regular basis now that I literally have to go into YouTube and first time I've ever had to do this when I type in flat earth. Now, sometimes I will click on flat earth and set the filter to live. Just click on the live button and see wh- how many flat earth hangouts are going. And sometimes yeah. there'll be as many as like six in one shot, you know, six happening simultaneously. That's crazy. Yeah. And and one troll. So six pro and, and then a troll hangout to boot. Yeah. So that's really seven. <laughs> yeah. A dedicated flat earth troll hangout. That's when you know you're getting to people. Absolutely. And they're running Absolutely. it for six hours, seven hours. I mean, they're horrible. You know, just music and, and them looking at us. And there's only like, what, five, six guys in there. But anyway, what uh, what's going on with you? Uh, not much. Not much. It was uh interesting uh, week with uh, trolling and things oh, like yeah. that on the Hangouts. Yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, accused of being a paid actor. <laughs> you are being I, accused of a paid, yeah. paid actor? Yes, yes. It's the, I'm sorry. It was just too funny. Hey, And, you know, I told the guys, like, look, I got no problem with you. You know, ask me questions, that's fine. And one of the other guys was all rude and nasty and stuff. It was just stupid. You know, go to another channel. Yeah. If you don't like it, go to another channel. I, watched, but I wanted to actually. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, no, I was going to, I wanted to talk about the spacewalk video, but no. Oh, spacewalk that. video. Yeah, let's talk about it. NASA releases, if you type in flat earth and, and into some search engine and click on news and set the filter to like the last 24 hours, you'll see this one spacewalk that NASA just released. And it's called the super super cut blah blah blah. I can't remember the number of forty one or something like that. Peanut gallery probably telling yeah. me. And it is horrible. Uh, I mean, I it's like, look, we're telling you how to try to make things better, and you can't do that. So why are you showing me an astronaut fumbling about with Velcro straps in a vacuum environment where I would think the heat would just melt those suckers off in, in instantly? Uh, show me a fisheye lens, you know, where it makes you look like you're thousands of miles above the earth, even though you, you even admit that you supposedly are only 400 miles above the earth, if you're that. And, uh, what else did they do? Oh, then they still don't turn the camera around 180 degrees. Look, it's, it's the thing I've been, I've been yelling about for two years now. I was like, look, turn the freaking camera around if you can pull it off. Can't do it. They won't do it. That's won't crazy. Do it. <laughs> they won't do it. So, won't which do means it. full well. I know full well. It's like, look, if you can't do this now, I, I'm willing to put cash money on this. SpaceX, that launch is never going to happen with those cameras running. It is never yeah, going to happen. That, that definitely going to be tough to uh, pull that one off, yeah. I think. I mean, it just no. it looks like CGI. It oh, and, and speaking of CGI, I imagine you, you enjoyed the uh, crap. Uh, what's his name again? Hang on, I'll scroll up. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. It is the where'd it go? Oh, Mike Helmick, the Mike Helmick video, where Mike Helmick broke down the green screen. Oh, with the uh, Yeah, on the interior the ISS shots with, uh, with the holographic thing yep. around the guy's uh, wrist and stuff. Yep. Yeah, fantastic yeah. video. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic video. If you guys have any doubts, watch. That watch that video. Have, have sit down. It's not even very long. It's called the fake NASA ISS interior. It's a technical breakdown by Mike Helmick. It is brilliant. Where he builds again. We everybody inspires everybody else. He he was inspired by uh, DITRH's video where the guy grabbed the hat that wasn't there and put the hat over to the side. There was no hat. He grabbed nothing, and yeah, he yeah. broke it down. And again, it it shows you. Why you never, ever, those guys out there that are doing operations, you never do live stuff. You can't do it. I I don't care if you're talking to school children. You can't do it nowadays. There's a reason why we most 99% of our television is not live television. It's because they'll rip it apart. People people will make mistakes. They will trip on themselves. It only takes one mistake to screw the whole thing up. So anyway, yeah. th- thanks to Mike Helmick. Great, great video on that, that part. That was embarrassing to use. To oh. and then, but then I wonder, well, you got to wonder, right? Are they doing it on purpose? Well, to- yeah. Do you muck it up enough to where people notice? And, and you, you and I have talked about this. Yeah. I, I yeah. firmly believe on a deeper level they are throwing it out there because people like you and me will catch it. But the general public didn't. It's, it it right. aired and people right. like, yep. Uh, it looks legit to me. Hashtag legit. And that's that's it. It, it goes off as, as a real event. But the, right. They're absolved. Somebody saw it. Nobody acted. They're done. They have, they're absolved. They move on and keep yeah. doing what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, unless literally, unless somebody's image, something happens, you know, during the live feed to where, you know, they get thrown to the side or, or you know, somebody's face turns into a lizard. Something so jarring that you can't miss it. But even then, they probably write it off as some sort of prank. But right. but yeah, I think they're I think they're mucking it up deliberately. So, uh, yeah. and, but I'm, I'm glad it's getting yeah. caught. That last one was so blatant. I mean, I don't I I don't care what kind of debunker you are. You cannot come up with an explanation. You cannot for why the guy grabs for a hat that isn't there and and has a mo- you know motions it off to the side like he's still got it in his hands. That is not a natural motion. I mean, we've seen you'll see running backs in football, you know, that'll that'll run through the play, even though the ball they've already fumbled the ball. Yeah, but that's because they're told to run through the play. The astronauts, there's right. no no reason. It's like, look, if you don't grab the hat, you just keep reaching for the hat until you grab it. 
you, you don't yeah, just... your your conscious mind would would know your subconscious mind wouldn't allow it. Yeah, you'd not only that, but your head. Hat. Once you miss the hat with your hand, you'd look down. It's like, oh, where was the hat? And not right. only that, you'd if you're grabbing if you're grabbing the hat, why aren't you looking at the hat while you're grabbing it? That was the other thing. You know, it's yeah, it's it's really, it is. I, the... I, I... Sorry. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I had no idea that it would be so blatant, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and that was supposedly an old video, right? And no, 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 not that right old. Away. No, the hat video was fairly new. Oh, that one was new. The, the hat oh. video. Now, the, the other stuff was, was fairly old because it was post-production. The hat was new because they were talking to some school children in Idaho. Oh, okay. And that's why they screwed the, it up live. Again, they were both oh, enough. Oh, the guy in the background, right? The, the oh the yeah, the one with the guy. Yeah, he floats with the harness behind the background. <laughs> and yeah, chasing called, a towel. Uh, right? What the hell is that? I know. What are they saying? It's awful. Throwing the towel. It's useless. Resistance is futile. Yeah. I, up. I can't wait to see what their next footage is going to be. I mean, they they, they just keep screwing it up. But we'll see. Anyway, what's hey, a, I got a quick quote. Go. What do you got? For, uh, I'm going to go with. Uh, it is better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Ooh. And that's that's by Eleanor Roosevelt. I like and, it. I, like and it. I think, like I said, I'm just going to go with the flow. You know, it was too funny. That I got, I, what, let me see, it was a paid media troll, a, a paid actor, a cop. Um, I think that was it so far. Oh yeah, I, well I had I had a video this last week where someone accused me of being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't make Not that up. That like, and, and he's like Holy completely crap. he's going, Oh, he has he has no neck and weak shoulders and blah blah blah. I'm going, dude, I'm six two two twenty. I will small shoulder you into the floor. So oh, but, but by all means, I'm I couldn't believe it. I was watching this going, seriously? Really? I'm a woman. Honestly, never been accused of that in my life. I've been accused of being, you know, metrosexual and being gay and all that stuff, but never a woman. Come on. <laughs> uh, but before I let you go, a uh, quick quote, quote yes. from the peanut gallery. It's a short one. Talk sense to a fool and he calls you foolish. And that's from Euripides. Mm. That's a very old quote. Oh, I- Anyway, give him one back. He, he probably knows this. Okay. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. Nice. Mm. Nice. Daniel Borstein. Nice. Borstein. Nice. All right, man. Uh, any shout outs Alrighty. before you go? Good night. Uh, same, t- same as the other gentleman. Hey, Mark Sargent. What's oh. up? Shout out. <laughs> nice. And, and, and your gentleman from Australia just proved time travel. He called right. from tomorrow. He's already in tomorrow. It's done. All right, man. Awesome. Have a good night. All right. I'll see you. Keep up the good work. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, 908. You still there? Hello? Yeah. Hello. Do you know you're on the phone with Strange World Radio? Hey, how you doing? Mark Sargent? Yeah. Mark, how you doing, man? Uh, my name is Alex. I'm calling uh, you from New Jersey. Hey, what's going on in New Jersey? Hey, nothing much, man. I uh, actually ran into your um, into your series uh, two months ago. Not gonna lie, and uh, at this point, I was uh, I was you know I was deep researching just random stuff, and uh, uh, your um, your clues came up, and it was like I, I started off with the second one, and um, you know they just they actually kept progressing and playing until they got to uh, the one with the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh man, this guy is on some. <laughs> and, um, and I mean, I mean, from that point on, I mean, I was just, uh, I was hooked on it. And you really, you really got me to actually uh, give it, a, give it a second look. And, and I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, what is going on here? The, the whole, um, there's the, the curvature isn't there. I mean, that that was that was a starter, and then yeah. uh, everything just progressed. But thanks for opening up our eyes, man. Oh, you. you're very welcome, and uh, I'm glad you're part of the journey. And you know, just be ready because it's it's you know weirder stuff is coming down the road. I didn't think it was gonna you know hit mainstream as hard as it did early in the year, but you know it, it before yeah. we get to the conference, it's gonna get crazy. Yeah, for sure, it really did. And I mean, uh, it blew up really uh, really quickly within the past at least year and a half, two years. Oh yeah, 
I, I know there's, you know, the, the, within the conspiracy stuff, like, like you say all the time, I've listened to your, uh, to your uh, interviews and everything. And I mean, it, it was, uh, it was one of those things where the information was there, but it was never really presented in a form where, where you could just say, okay, let, let me listen to this guy. Let, let's see what he's talking about. Let, let me give him a chance. Yeah. It's one of those things like where they start talking, they still, they just like sound so like out there that they're like so deep into it that oh yeah they're probably not listening to anything that anyone else is saying yep and um you just kind of gave it like a like a, like a different kind of view man awesome so thanks a lot mark so hey I appreciate it. very welcome and uh, you have a great rest of your night in new jersey okay all right you too man have okay bye 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 all right i know the phone line's been blowing up so everybody that was calling during those last two calls please keep calling I, I will try to pick you up if I can. 720-897-6111. That number is 720-897. And 203, they've been patient. Let's try 203. 203, you are on Live with Strange World right now. Mark Sargent, we yeah. love you. Flat Earth Squirrel, calling from Connecticut. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? We're doing great, man. Actually, I just heard uh, Mike from New York. He always gives me a good vibe, man. We're uh, just literally right up the road in Fairfield, New Canaan, Connecticut, that area. And, uh, you know, Mark, I'm not calling in just to talk about this or that or measurements on the flat earth. Mm -hmm. I'm calling in right now just to tell you that, you know what? You've done a hell of a job getting everyone in this community together. And you know what, dude? We don't know each other, and that's a, that's the problem. We don't know each other, but when I hear, like, you know, Mike calling from New York, or Mark calling from New York, it's amazing, because I hear that tingle up my spine. It's awesome. It feels like a community. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you it's, know what I'm saying, man? I do. You know I, what I'm saying? I do. It's a, it's a great community, and I think the numbers are even bigger than – than anyone's anticipated, which is why I've kind of changed the music is the to that whole Dune thing where the if you remember the 80s movie where the the Fremen, you know, is that that was the big secret that there were a millions and millions of Fremen on Arrakis and nobody knew about it. And that's why I think it's with the Flat Earth. I think there's a huge community out there, but most people are still in the closet because they're afraid of what might happen if they tell their family or their friends or their coworkers and and, you know, I, I get that. I've I've heard the horror stories, and I oh yeah, it, we've we've talked before, and I told you between Yale, Fairfield University, there are a lot of people out there, Mark, oh, yeah. that believe in you, oh, yeah. that will not come out because of their job security. Sure, and it's a shame because eh. I'm out there. I'm I, actually vocal. I'm like D I T R H. I'm literally going around being like, yeah, listen, flat Earth, <laughs> and people are like, oh, really? And then it takes a couple of weeks, and then people call me back, and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, oh, I I love we are, it. I mean, we're 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 on a roll right now, Mark. I know, I know. It's it's oh yeah, no, we, this thing is hitting a whole new sector. And I mean, the interviews I've been doing, doing lately, I can tell that the mood has changed. There, you know, way less persecution, and uh, people are are asking the questions. It's become this cool secret. Yeah, I, I kind of not to not to equate it to the drug world, but I kind of like like doing that. It's like, oh yeah, man, you're into conspiracies. Yeah, yeah, I got something for you. Oh yeah, you're into that? No, no, here's something right here, man. It's flat Earth. Oh yeah, no, keep keep it under your hat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't, hey, no, Mark, don't, don't hippie, take the whole but, thing. You know, those, those those days are over. I'm a hippie, but you know, yeah. like I have a couple of kids now. I'm a I'm really into this. I you know meditate. I do all this kind of stuff. And yeah, flat Earth is real. I've got both of my kids on board. And I've got my wife on board who went to Yale. She was completely straight before <laughs> I had her turn on your – literally, she thought I was crazy. Oh, yeah. And then she listened to your 12 steps or the 12 uh, – 12, 12 clues. 12 yeah. clues. Yeah. And she goes, Ryan, you're right. And I go, I'm not right. Mark Sargent's right. And that's where our relation that our relationship actually got a lot better because of you, Mark. Oh, and no, 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 I'm not here to, you know, that's awfully but nice thing. And she also loves Patricia Steer. And, you know, you guys have actually really, really, you know, I've got a eight and a 12 year old kid and, you know, my kids listen to you guys and they believe <laughs> in you. They believe in you guys more so than their teachers because they know they know their teachers are full of crap. <laughs> and believe me, we're very educated people. 
Nice. I won't tell you what colleges we went to or where we went. No, that's okay. That's okay. You understand what I'm saying? I do. I do. And it's very hard nowadays because we have to tell our kids one thing, but when they go to school, not to act out too much. And that's another reason why I'm calling you. It's like, where do you go with like telling your kids about this when they're going to a private or a public school? Like, what do you say? Be open-minded to both. I've, I've had those questions literally since month one where, especially with homeschooling people. Sure. And they'll, sure. they'll say, what do I tell my kids? I go, you tell, you tell them to be open-minded to both. No different than evolution versus creation. And that is, look, you're yeah. going to hear, because you're going to hear both sides. In fact, when it comes to this, though, those are really the only two topics I tell to listen to both sides. Look, you're going to science is going to tell you one thing, and creationists are going to tell you the other thing. And same right. thing with this. Like science told you it was a globe, but before that, it was flat so, for a long time. So you sure. got to look at both and make up your own mind. Sure, and that's why I call it for advice, man. Like. When you're talking to teachers, like, I don't want to be the bad guy saying that the teachers are wrong, but at the same time, it's like, they are, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, this, you know the, what I'm saying, Mark. Oh, yeah. The, the, the community has gotten big enough and strong enough and influential enough now to where it's not something you can just wave off anymore. You can't just wave as hell flat or just get out of here. You know, get out of here. And you know what, Mark? That's what, that's what, things that tingle through my spine then is that we're winning now oh yeah oh yeah it's, it's amazing they can't yeah there's, there's there's look if if science could have shot this thing down they would have they would have done it in the, the boxer analogy they would have done it in the first round they would have done it in month one or month two we're 18 months into this thing solid you know with a good head of steam no one's even stepping up to the plate and i'm warning science if you're listening right now anybody on science's side if you don't put up some sort of resistance soon, by the time you take this seriously, it's going to be too late, and you won't even get a chance to put your point of view out there. So I don't want to, do you well, think, Mark, yeah. Mark, as you said a couple of weeks ago, it, it's all over. I mean, the, yeah. the ball is rolling so hard yeah. that uh, they can't even catch up now. Yeah, yeah. I and and would you put put yourself in front of that ball if it's coming at you? Absolutely not. No, no. You, you know what, Mark? When you when you were talking about the whole Mars experience and how you would say I would never do something like that, you know yeah. what? You're totally on point because there's no way you could fake that. No, no. We're the the detection ability. You've given the general population technology tools that can now be used against them. And that's that's it. You, you've given them s- stuff that now they can use it as a microscope on anything you put out there. And you oh, know, yeah. you, you can't fake I, heck Mars. You, you it's the SpaceX mission. I still do not th- cannot figure out logistically how they're going to even attempt to pull it off other than to have some catastrophic failure with the onboard camera system. And then you're just looking at people inside a capsule, you know, moving around like they do in Star Trek. And then you just never show oh, the it, outside. It, 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 Mark, it's asking the fail. And by the way, Jaronisms point out when he pointed out the glitches on the system where with the green screen, it's just like, guys, give it up. It's time to give it up. I know. I know the green screen. You know what I'm saying, Mark? It's so frustrating when you have people like you that are real people. And then you have people like NASA that are just ripping us off. Yep. 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 Absolutely. You know what, Mark? I don't want to keep you, man, but my wife, my family, my community, we all believe in you. And God bless you, Patricia okay. Steer, D-I-T-R-H, and everyone behind you. We love you. Keep going, Mark Sargent. We love you. Thanks, man. It is very much appreciated. And you have a good rest of your night. You got okay. it. Flat, flat Earth Squirrel loves you, and we always will. All right. <laughs> have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. God, God bless, Mark Sargent. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow. A ring endorsement. I, I'm, I'm getting all warm and fuzzy. Okay, 818. I know you have called 1, 2, 5, 10, 15. All right, 818. Here we go. All right, 818. You have hit the redial so many times, I don't even know what to do with you. Where are you calling from? Arthur, California. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> California. Mark, I've been, yeah, man, I've been into conspiracy since the early 2000s, right? Yeah. And I thought I've heard it all, lizard people, the works, you know? Yeah. So I can understand why conspiracy people don't like the flat earth conspiracy because 
you and anybody else listening would agree that how many videos or books have you read where they rode in spaceships and they saw the Earth from space and it was a beautiful ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, it debunks, it debunks all of that stuff. Yeah. Everything. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, I, I hated and, I hated Flat Earth when I first looked at it. Hated it. That was the whole... Yeah, mis- you know, I, I mean, yeah, I was never objective to it. I'm open to anything, you know. And and then, like I said, the proof is everything. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's absolutely and, and, mind, mind-blowing. Yeah, so, I mean, all those uh, Richard Hogan's and, uh, you know, those guys that, that, that talk about... Uh, you know, one guy, actually, that I haven't had anybody heard or mention was uh, John Lear. That, you know that pilot? Oh, right. John Lear. Has, he, has, 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 has anybody contacted him and be like, hey, what do you think about the flat earth? you got all these hours of flying. I mean, he would be pretty interesting to talk to. You, you know, that's that's a good point. No, several people have emailed me about John Lear, and now I will uh-huh. make a note. I will see if I can track him but down. you know what? He, he's one of the guys, too, that's like, there's moon bases on the moon. There's, yep. You know, I mean, I think he's going to be like, like uh, what's his name, Richard Hoagland? Oh yeah, Richard Hoagland. Yeah, Richard yeah. Hoagland's got to crawl underneath a rock somewhere and hide because he. In fact, right, I, right. He probably if you listen to my stuff, he was supposed to debate me, and he. Yeah, I heard, I heard. I heard all that. That's right. That's right. Yeah, wasn't uh, You know, it's like it's the same thing. It follows under the case of um, no scientists want to step up to debunk this because they don't want to be that guy, just like you said. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to be that guy because if you, it's not again. If if you if your science. If you do not beat this thing in 15 minutes or less, I mean, shut it down, you've lost. Right, right. And they don't want to be that exactly. guy. And, and if you don't have the confidence, like, no, I don't think I can knock him out in 15 minutes, then what do you, right. you're not, you're going to walk away and say, you know what, I'm going to let somebody else do it. Unfortunately, somebody has to step up to this thing because otherwise we're going to run unopposed. And we're just, I mean, we're recruiting. Yeah. The Flat Earth Army just keeps growing and growing. It's big, man. It's big. It's huge, man. It's it's, it's like like the, like the caller before said, man. You're doing a good thing. Thanks, you know? man. If Thanks. people want to, people want to hear it or not. You know, if people want to just live their lives and watch American Idol and 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 you know drink Diet Coke with all that uh, aspartame and 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 who cares? Let them be. You know, but but I like to call it Flat Earthers are like divergence. There you, you know? go. There you go. For we the gotta movie. ask. Awesome. We. Exactly, divergence. Flat earthers out there, if you're listening, you guys are the divergence. Nice. We hey, are the divergence. I got about six, s- 60 seconds to the break. Do you uh, do you have any shout outs? Any final words? Any pokes? What do you got? No, just to, just to everybody, keep it going. Pass the word. Wow. There, actually, one thing real quick. The way I got my dad into it yeah. was I threw, a bunch of, I threw a bunch of NASA stuff at him first. A bunch of NASA stuff. Look, Dad, check this out. NASA's doing this, faking this, faking that. So I filled his head up with a bunch of NASA being, you know, false. Then I snuck it in, and then it was more believable because he believed all the NASA stuff first. So that's nice. one way to get people. Yeah, that, that's a good Start one. Off. That's that's what Darren Nesbitt over in England said does too. He destroys right, the Apollo exactly, mission. yeah. He t- destroys the Apollo mission first because you got to get exactly. rid of that first. Uh-huh. You've, you've got to tell uh-huh. people it's like, look, the Americans did not go to the moon. Then you work on flight. Right. Yeah, that's the one. Let's go. All right, Mark. Hey, all right. Peace and strength, brother. Thanks, man. You have a good rest of your night. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. And if you call right now, I will just hold you through the break for the three minutes. So I'm staring, and there we go, 831 area code. Let's see if we can pick up, pick them up before the music starts. 831, you there? I'm sorry, 818. Yeah. <laughs> or is it i'm sorry 831 why does that number keep changing the uh okay uh you're gonna have to hold on through the break okay yeah i'm good okay three minutes all right
kilang. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And normally I'd start, start the top of the hour with a shameless plug for the website and a little flat earth news, but we already have a caller. And they are from, where are you from? California. California. What's going on, California? Yeah, how are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. What's, uh, what's new? What, uh, what, what, what are we talking about? I, uh, I just want uh, <laughs> your, your predictions on when NASA and all the globalists and lying scientists will like, get taken down, you know? Uh, oh, tough one, because I partly think it's not under our control. I I think they're I think they're gonna get taken down, but I think it's gonna wanna be it's it's gonna be by their own design. Because the mistakes they are making on the space station the production mistakes, some of them seem too deliberate. Some of them seem like because remember you've gotta boil it down, the mistakes. People in this conspiracy world keep forgetting one of the biggest concepts, and that is they keep forgetting about the lowest common denominator. Not necessarily you and me and other conspiracy people, but the people that are home glued to the television set, you know, like my sister, who who believes that the word comes from God's mouth to Fox News. And those people need to be hit over the head with a two-by-four. And so <laughs> we see things, we're going, holy smokes, how could people miss this? Whereas the people are at home like, what, I don't get it. I, I watched the video, I didn't see it. So... It's tough. They're holding back for some reason. Sort of like the same thing when I when I go into flat. Okay. <laughs> I'm having a di- everything was great in the first half of the show, and now I'm just having the worst time. Let's try this one. All right. How about three three zero? Can you hear me? Or did I just kill the? Now I'm back. Am I am I dead now again? Wes from Flat Earth News, you cannot use your regular thing. You've got to use a phone line. You cannot call your with your regular line. Three three zero. Are you there? Can you hear me? No, I'm good. Well, I'm good, but the the phone call's gone that I was that I was talking to. Oh, this segment's going so well. Should I just read an email while while we wait, or should we just try to keep fumbling through the phone calls? Let's try one, shall we? All right, I'm going to read an email. I'm going to let Peanut Gallery let me know if I actually finish the email. This email's called, I know you're a shill 100%. Imagine my shock when I seen your latest Q&A 33. How blatant can you be? I'm sure it's only a matter of time till you use 66. Man, you're so predictable. Please don't read this on air and don't use my name, which is Rob McKenzie. That's funny, Rob. It's good. Okay, Wes says I'm off. And, but am I off? And, no, now I can't even call. Now I've got, I've got the, am I on the studio? It doesn't even say that I'm talking to the studio. (sighs) This is fantastic. Having a great time. You're good. Finished email. Shill. Okay. I'm just going to keep reading emails because right now, sorry guys, I cannot add you. I'm going to have to wait till the next break. I'm going to have to reboot. Skype and see if I can uh, bring everybody back in because it is not letting me add anything to group. The system jammed up. I don't know why. I think it was because I just had so many calls coming in. I didn't know what to do. Had some audio conflict. Don't know why, though. Sorry, phone calls. You're going to have to wait. Everybody who's calling in right now cannot, cannot talk to you until the next break, and then I will reboot the system. Which means I got 15 minutes of emails. Let's pump through them real quick, okay? This one's called NASA Satellite. Hi, Mark. Love your work. Trying to figure out how to tell my adult kids and wife that I'm a flatty. And he linked a New Zealand Herald article, which is uh, says there's a satellite right there. See how the solar panels are pretty much horizontal? I guess they know damn well that's the easiest way to catch sunlight up there. And... Peanut Gallery says I'm on the air, but Wes Stace says I'm off the air. Can I get a confirmation from more, either one of those guys? Am I on or off right now? Peanut Gallery says I'm on. And I'm reading emails. Wes says I am off. 
I wonder if it's a regional thing. Yep, peanut gallery says I'm on, and he's not my state. And yeah, Wes is crazy. Wes stays from Flatter News. Yeah, who knows what's going on with Wes? Seriously, uh, this one's called Mainstream Media and Bob from Globusters also says that I'm on the air. Thank you, Bob, for that. Yeah, we'll figure this out one way or the other. I had such high hopes. Nope, phone calls coming in. Cannot add you to group until the next break. Not going to reboot Skype right now. This one so it starts, Mark, hey, check out the show The Five on Fox News, Monday, April 24th, the second half. They blast Bill Nye. Absolutely right. Fox News really laid into them, and I was glad that they did it. Fantastic. This one's called Congratulations. Hi, Mark. I hope you're doing well. Sorry that I'm one day too late to this. I only listened to The Secret Show today. Congratulations with your birthday. I have a small question. Since you are the huge statistics guy, I know there is quite a lot of flat earth activity and activists in Germany. But do you know if there's any activity in Belgium? Until now, I noticed one other Belgium flat earth YouTuber, but nothing more than that. Okay, I have in real life flat earth friends, but I would like to have a Belgian flat earth meetup or something like that to be able to meet new flat earth people. But until now, I could find nothing of that sort. Okay, I know maybe I should organize it. Uh, if, if ever on some show you want to give out my email for this reason, please give. Okay, I'm going to. If anyone wants to organize a flat earth meetup in Belgium, this guy's email address is fe at g-e-t-u-i genius dot b-e is that right f-e at g-e-t-u-i g-e-n-i-s oh wow at dot b-e oh and i think it is on the secret show or maybe some other thing that i heard sometimes that flat earthers need to have some secret way to see if other people are also flat earthers i believe we already have this only it is a big bit big and expensive it's called the nikon p900 <laughs> while i emailed you i'm not a secret flat earther i'm an open zetetic agnostic telling almost everyone i meet in real life that the world is not at all what we have been told and today i took more than 300 pictures where many are over 34 kilometers distance Oh man, at that distance, image quality is quite bad. Trying to figure out if I can definitely, for myself, disprove the curve. Oh, interesting thing I already noticed. There are strange things with the GPS data that is stored in the images. I need to find a good way to analyze it, but the height seems to be quite off on many pictures. Proof that GPS is not airspace-based, but ground-based, like Loran. So at least expect me to make some video about this. By the way, my channel... Uh, with yes I already with one video is in fact I better click on his channel it's called Global Deception so check it out it's called SpaceX Fakes, Fake X Reaction to Jaronism Challenge it's by Global Deception awesome super great thank you for that and let me look real quick in chat uh, Bob's and, and, and yep 330 called and 612 and New York also says that I'm on contacting NASA to move the satellite to get you a better signal. Yeah, I have no it, This happens every once in a while, technical issues. Although it is a little strange. Yeah, now I've got all white bars. Everything looks green, except I can't add anybody to group. I, who knows? Sometimes these could. I mean, I have a lot more bandwidth today than I did yesterday. So apparently bandwidth is not always the case. And who knows? Maybe, maybe I, if you believe in conspiracies, maybe somebody's coming after me. I don't know. It's possible. This one's from Paul Lindbergh. Hi, Mark. Just saw it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Just wanted to report back on the Orlando Flat Earth Meetup. Thanks to your advertising, we had a great group of eight people, and I've got seven more Flat Earth contacts now. We have started a group hangout and keep in touch, sharing links and stories. Want to say thank you again for your help, Paul Lindbergh. Yeah, if anyone wants to do a hangout in their town and they want me to advertise it on my channel just tell me when it's going to be uh, I'll give me just all the details and if you have any pictures hey great otherwise i'm just going to use some generic slides of whatever city you're in and if there's some cool little touristy thing there i'll probably highlight and put some flatter stuff and some music over the top but i will do it for you i've done it for a couple of people already and i will do it for more this one's called regarding fe hello mark i have watched your movie on youtube don't believe in the flat earth theory this might change your mind flatter society great work 
Wow, that's a completely new title. I don't know who made that one. Don't believe in the flat earth theory. Somebody should look that up. I didn't make that one either. But it's probably the flat earth clue is chopped up into little pieces. One thing bothers me. How to explain clouds lit up from below after a sunset. Thank you. Best regards, Linus. How to re best explain clouds lit up from below after a sunset. Don't know. Uh, spend spend time on two different channels. Go to DITRH or ZTedicism.com or Jaronism. Or heck, I, I don't even know if Bob from Globebusters may have done something on the sun. I don't know. It's not one of my specialties. But I, I, I should probably mention real quick because the, the he mentioned a video here. He's people that mash up my clues. First time ever. I finally got a notice on this. It's not a, it's not a copyright strike or anything. But turns out that Admiral Byrd footage when he was on the Long Jeans Chronoscope back in 1954, nobody copyrighted that. So somebody recently, two years later, finally got a hold of it. And anyone that used that Admiral Byrd's footage is now going to get a notice in their thing saying, oh, yeah, by the way, you can't monetize it. Which means those guys that had the, well, I mean, those guys made some money. The guys that have three million hits on my Flat Earth Clues, they made some money because there was nothing in there that was copyrighted, including there was no even no music. But now the Admiral Bird footage has finally been copyrighted. And I don't know who did it. I don't know who was smart enough to grab it. Maybe they realized uh, that it was it was picking up a whole bunch of hits. I don't know, you know, who who owned the rights to that? CBS maybe. Anyway. Yeah, and and uh, Peanut Gallery says, yes, that is a chop-up of mine. How many hits is on that thing? Put that in there, too, while I read this next email. This one's called Flat Earth Intrigued. Mark, I enjoyed your videos on the subject of Flat Earth, and it took a few months for me to come to the realization that this is not only not a joke, but very plausible. Like someone telling you grass is red and that you have been seeing it wrong your whole life. Proving a flat earth with a little budget maybe. Uh, a bit difficult since not everyone can buy a high-end laser and shoot it across a lake. I had a theory that might work. A portable electric gyroscope. You start while in a car and travel 100 miles. Since the gyroscope would keep its original stance from its original startup, wouldn't it appear like it was tilted to your, at your destination? Just a thought. Dave Hardaway. Thank you, David. It's a good one. I like it. Putting a gyroscope in a car. And yeah, that video that guy mentioned, another chop up of mine, it has 485,000 views and 2,874 likes. That's fantastic. Didn't have any dislikes, but the fact that it's got half a million views, great. Good for him. Glad that, that people are using it. I gave away so many hits, it's scary. I still got time for a few more emails, don't I? And I'm sorry, you guys, you're going to have to wait to the last segment to call in because I am not going to read. I've already had too many interruptions with Skype already. 2005. Wait a minute. Dis oh, dislikes. Oh, oh so it's 50-50 pretty much. Uh, what is that? 2874 up, 2561 down. Yeah, that's what, 52 to 48, something like that. 52% to 48. Yeah, that's about right. Polarizing. Absolutely. You can... Love it or hate it, you can't ignore Flat Earth. Ooh, that's going to be the title of, of my next show, I think. Love it or hate it, you can't ignore Flat Earth. Yeah, totally. This one's called Hi from Down Under Tasmania. Good day, Mark. Yeah, I know, 334 code. I'm seeing you up there, but I can't pick you up yet. Can't pick anybody up till the next break. Great work on your videos and website. I'll get straight to it. I'm a 95% Aussie flat earth after listening to you and Rob Skiba and many others. But I have one nagging question that has me stumped. How is it the daylight hours increase in towns and cities in the southern hemisphere? Cape Town, South Africa, the longest day is 14 hours. Hobart's longest day is 15 hours. Invercargill, New Zealand is 15 hours. Ushuaia, South America, 17 hours. Time's taken from timeanddate.com. Have you and Rob or any of the others community thought about this one? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And kind regards, Peter. Uh, no, not my specialty. Why there's longer days in there. Look, I, when it comes to the sky, it just about anything's possible for me. So the longer days is not going to be a flat earth killer in, in the slightest. If it was, this thing would have already died by now. This one sent to, uh, it's been sent to everybody. I think Bob even got a copy of this one, the new Flat Earth Proof. You know what, it was sent to everybody, so I'm not going to read that one. This one was called First Time Flat Earth Brought Up by Someone Else. 
you could say Mark from New York <laughs> or Zulu one Z U L U O N E. I was at an overnight camping training course during the land navigation portion. Someone brought up a comedian doing flatter stuff on YouTube. He was a math professor. So I said, I had a friend who was into it and gave him the curve calculation and no star parallax. He gave me a strange look, but I wasn't sure if he believed or not. I didn't get a chance to talk about it again, but it was a good, it was good. Someone else brought it up. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, it's spreading everywhere. I didn't get that email. No. Yes, I know, Peanut Gallery. You didn't get the email. 334, are you listening to the podcast? I can't take calls until the next sec section. 334, you got it. Seriously, I can't pick you up. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't pick you up. But thank you for keep trying. You don't hold the record, by the way, for the readout button. The readout button record, I think, is about 28 hits in one show, which is ridiculous. This one's called The Mormon Book of Moses is Flat Earth. Mark, a few months ago, I emailed you about the Book of Mormon was incompatible with Flat Earth. The Book of Mormon is not the only book that Mormons have. Turns out they have another book which has far better information in it about the Earth. In the Book of Moses, chapter 1, verses 27 through 35, it says that Moses was taken atop a very high mountain, and he saw the whole Earth all at once, every part of it. You can't see every part of Earth all at once if it's a globe. Moses saw more than that, though. Moses saw other worlds, and it seemed to confuse Moses, and he asked God for an explanation. God tells Moses that the worlds that lie, that he saw, were all called Earth, and they are all inhabited. He goes on to say that there are worlds without number. This should bring to mind the pictures showing Earth on an ice plane with other worlds around it. I don't know how to reconcile the current Mormon beliefs about the flat Earth, but the Book of Moses is considered canon to Mormons, and maybe this will help them deal with it. Mike Horde from Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. That's great. Interesting. I did not know that. This one... Let's see if I can read it really fast. Hi, Flat Earth Guy. Mark, it seems we need a forum sort of thing for folks interested to help bring forward supporting and validating real science of our newfound reality, Flat Earth namely. Does such a group already exist as currently I'm following primarily you and Miss Steer? I have seen some YouTube vids from apparently more technic technically, technically folks, but only one or two. No one has caught my eye yet in this sub-arena of flat earth thought. A real science approach is needed soon, now, or several hundred years ago. You have my permission to bring this up tonight on Pat's show or wherever, but now please act as my liaison for this effort. I'm not looking for more work, but be willing to help such an effort as when I am able, Stephen. Uh, yeah, Stephen, there's tons of stuff out there uh, as far as people getting together. Just look at look Flat Earth Hangouts right now. Just go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth, and click on Live and Filters, and you'll sign. I mean, there's stuff every single day. There are groups you can join. So anyway, when we come back from the break, let's try this again. 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And we're going to give it a shot, Okay. So okay. Check wallet for his name. His face is in the muck. I think his zipper's stuck. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. T L R. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And I'm going to hit mute on the phones for now because, unfortunately, I could not get them working during the break. For whatever reason, I cannot add them to the group. And so we're just going to we're just gonna roll with emails for now. Sorry, everybody that's calling in right now cannot, for whatever reason, cannot get you in. I tried four times during the break with two different numbers 
could not get it to work. I probably have to reboot the whole thing, and we just don't have time for that because a reboot on this system takes like a full six minutes, and uh, we're just not going to do it. So we're just going to crank through emails. Sorry, guys. I appreciate everybody that called in so far, though, tonight. Love the calls, and maybe I can I can get it up working next week. But until then, we're just not going to do it. So let's crank through them, shall we? And yes, I know, Peanut Gallery is upset because he really likes phone calls, but nothing I can do. I, I tried everything. I mean, literally, I've quadrupled my bandwidth as of tonight, and everything, you know, rebooted everything, everything was great. But it's just not going to happen. Sometimes it just wasn't meant to be. You know what I mean? This email is called Reward for $25,000 to Prove the Fake Ball. Mark, what are the guidelines for the Globehead scientist to prove the ball? Also, who raised the money for this? Just was curious more than anything... Are you the person they contact for the debate? Any takers yet? I assume not. God bless man, Jonathan from Ohio. No. There is, in fact, I will email this guy at the same time I send this to him. The, the person you need to contact, if you've got anyone that's willing to take the challenge, is Kathy Dunson, which is, her email is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. Peanut Gallery, don't look so sad. Look, I, I'm not going to keep trying if it keeps kicking me off. That, that's going to be kind of silly. I mean, unless it was kicking me off just during the commercials, I suppose. You know what? I could, suppose I could try to take one. You know what? I'll give it five minutes. I'll read a couple more emails, and then I will try to take calls. But if it knocks me off, it's going to be on, on your head. All right? So hopefully Peanut Gallery is going to will. No, I'm not going to sing Joe Jackson. The email next one's called Deep Thoughts. Okay, let's see here. Hello, Mark. Love your work. I originally emailed Patricia, but she totally screwed up my email in so many ways when she only read a tiny amount on air two shows ago. God bless her. My name is Irving Canaeus. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I'm a man. She pronounced my first name perfectly, let, let both of you and her accepted that I was a girl. In which world is Irvine a, Irving a girl's name? Did I actually say that? Irving? I've never... I have never called a guy, a girl, Irving. Anyway, I'll get straight into it now as I know you're busy pumping out vids, et cetera, et cetera. During a recent show, recent show between yourself and Patricia, you said something which took me by surprise and down a spiral which I never wanted to travel. You specifically said, our minds are not meant to process that. After talking about how if we travel back in time to the beginning of time, Big Bang, or our creator who might have made the Big Bang or such. Do you recall that conversation? No, I do not. You said if we keep thinking about what happened right at the beginning of time, our minds are not meant to process that. I don't – What I? it doesn't sound like me. Well, ever since hearing this, Mark, my mind hasn't had any rest. It's driving me crazy. Questions like does our creator have parents? Did they have a creator? When really is the beginning of everything? It's been torturing me, 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 Mark. Every hour, every minute, every second. More than you can imagine. Why this has affected me more than the average person, I'm not sure why, but I can't deny it. I have not been able to rest ever since hearing you say that. Then I was thinking, our creator either wants us to eliminate bad things and cannot, or can but does not want to, or neither wishes to, or can, or <laughs> Good Lord. Or wants to and can. If he wants to and cannot, then he is weak, and this is not applied to our creator. If he can but does not want to, then he is spiteful, which is equal, equally foreign to our creator's nature. If he neither wants to nor can, he is both weak and spiteful, and so not a creator. If he wants to and can, which is the only thing fitting for a creator, where then do bad things come from and why? I've spent so much time on this as there's only one answer possible. We are living in hell. This is hell. It has to be. The bad far outweigh the good in almost every aspect of life. Therefore, the flat earth movement is a horrible thing. Because you see, the elite, the few people at the top that we hate so much, the Masons, whatever you want to call them, they found out this truth a long time ago. And yes, they deceived humanity with the heliocentric model of the Earth, but by doing so, they gave humanity inspiration. They gave humanity freedom to reach for the stars, and more importantly, they gave humanity the power over our Creator. Do you see? They decided to mock our Creator, and rightfully so they should. What better way to get under the skin of our creator than to make every human being on this planet think that they can travel and explore beyond the physical limits our creator made. You see? Since this is hell, our creator is the enemy. Hence, why the elite worship the devil. It's so clear. 
Please don't think that I am a shill or whatever. I really am a flat earther. If this email will do damage to the flat earth community, then please just keep it between us. Guys, you're killing me. You got to put that comment in the front. I just hope you have time pers to personally reply to this because these are really deep thoughts to me. I have so much more, which I'd love to personally share with you only. Irving Canaeus. Irving, I don't know. It would take me a while to respond to something like that. Hey, you're right. That is a pretty deep email. No question. So, and Wes from Flat Earth News, no, I do not want to try a Skype call. No, because that, I absolutely know that'll screw me up. That will, will make calls, un, as far as I know, it'll, it'll never, ever happen. Uh, Peanut Gallery says, and worlds without numbers since I created, and I also created them for mine own purpose, and by the sun I created them, which mine only begotten. That's from the book of Moses. And he beheld many lands, and each land was called earth, and there are inhabitants on the face thereof. Also from the book of Moses. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, the phone calls, there are a bunch of them. And I'm the phone actually is ringing more now than it did ever before. Uh, I can try to add it, but look, if it doesn't work, that's it. What do you think, peanut gallery? What do you think? Should I pick up one just to just to uh, see if? Yeah, I don't know. Let me read one more one more email. This one's called the Flat Earth Challenge. Hi, Mark and Zen. He's speaking of Zen Garcia, by the way. The Flat Earth Explosion is waiting for you. Simply rebrand the Flat Earth Challenge to the Flat Earth University Challenge. Ooh. -hoo. Send out press releases to university and college newspapers inviting student challengers. Then sit back and watch an on wonder as Flat Earth explodes across the USA. Best wishes, GP Gardner from the Flat Earths Store. That's not bad. That's not bad. Although, although I still think it, it would probably scare him. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, one more. I'll do one more, and then we'll try to do this, and I'll probably get dead air when when I try to do this. Okay. This one's called Callers. Hi, Mark. A few times only this has happened, but I would like to experience it more. And I think your show is the place for it. I like it when people call in and talk about what Flat Earth did to their soul. That process, the realization, the illumination, the shedding of that indoctrination that has hung on us since we were falsely educated, as one YouTuber, Mama Lewis, put it, it gives you peace and happiness. Our minds are free from this materialistic prison. Wonder is better than false knowledge. I feel something happened to my heart and my soul when people try to use words to describe what has happened to them on this journey. At the start of each call, can you please make it a habit to ask the caller to describe the emotions they felt as they begin to realize the earth is really flat? I think that is the source of real nectar to be tapped. All the best, Dave Tanner. Awesome, Dave. And I, I'll try, but most people, you know, it's it's a it's a personal thing. But I, I will I will see what I can do there. All right, next caller that calls in, I'm going to try to add them, and we'll see if it takes. If it doesn't take, it might just boot me off, and then yeah, try it. No email. Curse you, TFR delay. All right, I will. Nope, Wes, I'm not not picking that. No, 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 not going to try you. But I'm going to try 601. Here we go. Ready? Rob, because of that. And there's nothing I can do. And in fact, 601's calling back, and it doesn't even say that they disconnected from their side. And I don't know if I'm even still on. And 254 is calling back in. We'll try to add them. 254, can you hear me? I can hear you. Ha-ha! <laughs> Success! <laughs> <laughs> All right, 254, what do you got? Oh, so apparently I have to sacrifice a call. I have to sacrifice one of the caller to the call board gods. It's seriously, it's like throwing somebody into a volcano and then they're, well, they're appeased. And now I'm, <laughs> so it's okay. What do you got? What do you got? I'm going to give you five, six minutes. What do you got? Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I am the incessant caller. Oh, I remember you. Got, got three twice from Texas, Shanna. Yep. And I, I've been watching the moon, and I thought it was kind of chasing the sun, okay? Yep. I thought, it, to me, during the day when I can see both of them, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was staying close to the sun, like it was almost catching up to it, and then it wasn't. Well, now it's way behind it. The other day, the sun set and the moon rose. I'm yeah. just going to use those terms because that's what global uses. 
Sure. You know, sure. it's passing out of my sight and coming into my sight. Well, so I'm not sure why this Terminator is on the moon, but if the sun just passed out of my sight and the, sun, the moon is diving into my sight, mm-hmm. why would the Terminator be on the top of what I see of the moon? Good point. I mean, that makes no sense if what they say, what causes that. Yeah. No, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. You're not the first. You know, there have been a whole bunch of people that have made videos that say that have been like, people that normally would have never looked twice at the moon and the sun being in the sky at the same time are now doing that. And yeah, because most people just look at it and it, oh, it, they don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all know as children, you know, you're on the playground, you look up, it's like, hey, how's the moon up there? How can I see the moon if the moon is a nighttime object? Everybody, every kid goes through that. But now everyone's trying to analyze the shadows, which is even more interesting, in my opinion. Well, it, I I don't think it's a shadow, I, me personally. Yeah? No, 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 I don't think it is either. I, I firmly believe that the moon completely is its own display system. Have, have, I, I'm on board with it being its own light. Yep. Yep. Totally. Yep. You know, I I seen the whole thing, the guy doing. The, I remember the guy put a thermometer under a chair, or something. He put yep. it in a shadow. Yep. And it was cooler. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's, it's, moonlight than it was in the shadow. Yep. But there was another guy that did tests, and there was a third test he did. I can't remember what it was though. Well, there's there's three you can do now, and and I will absolutely take credit for the third one, which is there's moonlight, there's moon shadow, and then there's magnified moonlight. Take a magn- magnified moonlight. That's what it was, and it was even colder. It right? was even colder, and that's and that was the question I posed just just on a whim when I didn't even believe in. It. I was going, is so if magnified sunlight gets, like, gets hotter, MDF. yeah. Yeah, magnified moonlight gets colder. I'd love, I you know, I'm still waiting for a debunker to come back and explain that because the the tests. Are, How can anybody explain that? No, you can't. You can't. I mean, the I mean, we can duplicate it in universities now. That's the good news. It's called a cold laser, and we can absolutely do this with a hot, with a high tech laser. But then you have to say, okay, if that's a cold laser doing that, then how is the moon doing that? Because right. unless, unless you're saying the moon, unless you're saying the moon is a mechanical device, you've got to be able to explain it. And I mean, we're not talking if it was like a one degree swing or a three degree, degree swing, then yeah, maybe you could you could call it you know, you know a, a normal variance. But if it's twelve degrees Fahrenheit swing, sometimes thirteen, that's a lot. That's that a, is a lot. That's a big swing, and, it's, and- you can test it anywhere. Well, and from what, you know, I have been taught in my life through my education that a Terminator should be at the bottom of the moon coming up in my vision yep. if the sun just set. Correct? I think so. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. And, and so I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Why y'all? Yeah, y'all gotta get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, I totally hear you. You gotta make this loud work. Oh man, yeah, totally hear you. Uh, any any other thing you want to mention, real quick? Because I I wanted uh, I I've been none talking. that I can think of. None that I can think of. But I appreciate you and everybody that is getting out there and trying to. I just watched uh, Russian Biz put out. A, video it's like 40 minutes long and it's uh never sleep again oh nice the album nice that odd put out yep i think and it's great That's cool loved it it's nice for music that you can relate to <laughs> right on right on anyway all right well hey you get some sleep right and uh yeah. we'll, we'll talk again soon i'm sure we will have a okay. great night all right you too and show all right bye bye all right, I'm going to try to pick up 443. 443, did you make it? Hey, man. Hey, where are you calling from? Wait, did I already talk to you tonight? Yeah, Houston. Oh, hey, what's going on? Are you just calling to make sure my phone line works? Or did I cut you no, off? No, I want to I wanna, I wanna read you something. <laughs> okay, what do you got? It won't, it won't take long. Okay, go. Right. 
The earth is a realm. It's not a planet. It's not an object. Therefore, it has no edge. Earth would be more easily defined as system environment. Earth is also a machine. It's a Tesla coil. The sun and the moon are powered wirelessly in the electromagnetic field. Yeah. This, this and, field. and, of course, I, I know this quote because the last part of it gives it away. Here's the buy. Here's the buy. Nikola Tesla. There you go. Yeah. Uh, a very, very intelligent man, and I think a guy that probably broke a few rules. I think he. I think. If he, I agree. I agree. I think I agree. he had the cheat codes to the world, and which is why <laughs> he can only be allowed to get so big. I mean, seriously, I make, mean, making an earthquake machine that you can hold in the palm of your hand. Come on. There's also a reason why the most magnificent car out there is named after this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a guy that supposedly created the first and only death ray, and uh, and tested it supposedly uh, on a on a sheep, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and, and only yeah, right. yeah supposedly yeah, like right. blew it to, blew it to bits, and people said, yeah, that weapon should not be like oh, it was. Yeah, he... <laughs> it would have been the first destructive I mean, device banned into the civilian population. I well, mean, there's a reason well, why. First of all, we, we could have had free energy forever. Oh, yeah. If, you know, yeah. the powers that he, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted yeah. to see. No question. But, well, I'm glad you knew that quote. Yeah. yeah. But, hey, man, it, like I said, man, you're the greatest. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, 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 I'm doing listen, okay with this you, stuff. You, hey, I don't care what anybody says, bro. You are doing great work. Well, thank you. I applaud you. All right, man. Hey, you have a good extra night. I'm going to see if I can pick up any more calls, okay? Yeah. Houston, we're out. All right. Bye-bye. All right, 601. Did you make it finally? Man, I made it finally. Oh, I hate getting God. sacrificed have... to the phone call guys, man. That was <laughs> terrible. It, it's it's apparently, and 318 keeps trying, and I, I, I 318, I will try to pick up. What I'm trying to do is like bring them, whoever it is, in as the other one's going out because this thing's twitchy enough that the first one, it just chokes on it. And then for whatever well, reason, the second one that comes in, it's fine, but you have to have it in rap, rapid succession. So anyway, yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad it worked this time. Uh, a couple of things that I want to talk about. Um, yeah. I loved your show with DITRH. That was great. Oh, thanks. One of the things that he had asked you about is he asked about a word. He said there's always a word that's used when an artist comes up with an image or a picture. And I was screaming because I couldn't get to the, my phone at the time. But it was rendering. That was the word he was oh, looking for. Oh, rendering. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, and that's one of the things that I first uh, caught on about everything that you see and read about space being fake is I was looking for pictures of uh, planets. Yeah. And I would say, well, this is an artist rendering of a uh, distant planet, Gliese 51C, that could support life. And I'm like, wait a minute, artist rendering? Well, what does that mean? Yeah. And, well, an artist looks at the data, supposedly, and then draws a picture of what they think it would look like. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? That Everything is, something. is oh, a rendering. Oh, right, 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 right. right. The, well, yeah, that was the, the video where I saw those two artists talking to each other, and they basically fessed up. They said, oh, yeah, now the, the, all those beautiful – and that's what they really are, those beautiful NASA long-distance pictures. Those aren't, yeah. those aren't pictures at all. They're not taking pictures yeah. of anything. They're just giving data to, these, to, the, to the guys that are rendering the images and, or drawing them or whatever they're doing. And then they say – and these guys say, okay, what do you want it to look like? What is what? What are you trying to do here? I mean, that's straight out of Hollywood. You go to the the artists yeah. and you say, and the artists say, okay, here's what we need for the promo poster. Well, here's the here's the vibe we're going for, and we we take it as gospel. You show they they don't. Here's the thing, and I'll I'll hype on, on this in in um, other debates down the road, which is this is what science doesn't do. They don't put disclaimers in there. So the image should have a disclaimer that says artists, you know, we know the obvious artist renditions, you know, where it looks like it's drawn Absolutely, by somebody yeah. in college, but there's a lot of stuff that you don't know. And they should have a disclaimer saying this is an art, artist interpretation. And that if you don't want to put that, that's fine. But eventually what's going to happen is if you don't put that, you have some 10 year old that's going to see that and they're going to, they're going to say, Oh, 
that that's a real image. And and if they see it enough times over their high school career or whatever it is, then it's gospel. And they yes. it, that's it's indoctrination. It is. And they, they've never backtracked from that. The, if people think I'm kidding, again, the core of the earth, a perfect example. Never. Yes, that's do, one of the best examples I've ever heard, in fact. Do not know what the core of the earth looks like, but you keep putting in every freaking science book that's out there. And, you know, every kid th- reads it and they go, oh, yeah, that's what the core of the earth looks like. It's like, dude, it, it, if it's 4,000 miles to the center, that means it's four, 1% of that is 40 miles. You haven't even drilled yeah, that. No. You drilled eight. You've done a fifth of the 40 miles. Exactly. A fifth of the 40 miles. A fifth of a percent. You know, it's, and it's funny you say that because I actually have a 10-year-old son. And um, regarding one of your other callers that was talking about children and what to do with them and flat earth, this is what I do with him. Mm-hmm. I have not outed myself to my son that I'm a flat earther. And I'm, I, I may never will, but I will present him questions. Like he'll come home and say, well, I learned this about the earth today. And I'll say, well, how do you know that? And I'll just lead him down that way. Well, okay, how can you prove that? Let's take away NASA. Let's take away photos. Let's. How can you prove it is? And he'll go, I can't, Daddy. Nice. So I would, I would give the advice to any parents to raise their children to be, not necessarily pick a side, but to be objective and not just accept everything that science tells them. Yeah. That would be my advice to that guy yeah, that yep. called in. Um, you read an email um, asking a question about sunlight underneath clouds. Yes. And how is that possible? Yes. Uh, Rob Skiba actually has a, one of his little brief, it's like two minute long experiments on that. Okay. And he covers that, and it's actually pretty neat. So uh, cool. that email person can check into it. And yeah, because I actually had that same question not too long ago, so I was surprised when I found it. Let's see. And my friend, that's about it. I'm glad I got in. All right. I'm, I'm glad you did too, man. I'm, I'm sorry we had to throw you into the volcano at least once. <laughs> sorry that I made it out. <laughs> uh, Mark, I appreciate your time. You have a fantastic evening, and right. I'll try to call it next week, brother. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Last chance for anyone who wants to call in. you got two minutes to say your piece. 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And we'll do a... a, a, a preemptive thank you to everybody that's called in so far. Thank you for everyone that sent emails. There's 318. Let's see if we can grab them real quick. 318, are you on? Because if you are, you're the last call of the night. Wow, that's amazing, man. I, uh, a couple of months ago, I could call in no problem. Now it's a hassle. <laughs> I know. It's got, well, the, the whole community has just gotten bigger and bigger. I mean, get a member on YouTube now. There's hangouts happening, Flat Earth hangouts all the time. Literally, they're just stepping on each other's toes every single day, almost 24-7. I was watching two or three hangouts happen this morning before 8 a.m. How does that work? So, yeah. yeah. What, uh, what's on your mind? Well, we, don't have you, a lot, we don't have a lot of time. you got like 90 seconds. What you got? I tell you, man, uh, these, these videos that y'all are making, I, I really think that y'all are helping NASA to fake space because y'all, y'all are showing them where they're messing up. But, I, uh, I think so, you. too, but they aren't fixing it. <laughs> That, that's yeah. the part that's killing me. What, what are you guys doing to improve? The video they came out with today was horrible. It's like how many how many minutes are you going to show a guy fumbling with Velcro straps outside of the space capsule? How how long are you going to do that? It's, it's, oh it's, man, uh, I I got a little boy who's been sitting here for over an hour waiting to talk to you. Okay, okay, go go go. What you got? What All you right, got? here he goes. Who is he? Hi. Hey, man. My name. Hi, my name is Tristan, and I'm. A, and I'm in the second grade, and I asked my teacher um, to show me an experiment where water curves, and she couldn't do it because it doesn't curve, and water always finds its level. Wow, that is a smart kid. What a perfect way to end the show. How, you, That's fantastic. What did your teacher do? She, she... Um, she she just didn't talk to me anymore. She did, all she did was walk away. <laughs> That's awesome. That is I was so, like, what is this about? What? That is so cool. I am so happy that you did that, man. That's fantastic. Good for you. Seriously, I couldn't. I could not be happier for you. You totally made my night. Thank you. <laughs> You're very very welcome. Uh, and, 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 and you've got to be probably the youngest person to even call into the show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's okay though. For being so young, you're very, very smart. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. So keep keep up the good work, man, and stay flat, okay? Okay, I'm a flat earther. <laughs> oh, somebody ripped this up for sound bites. This is awesome. And with that, guys, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for everyone that called in. Uh, and thank you especially, you know, that the, the last call. It was it was great. It made my night. Same, see you Ooh, next time. Same this? flat time, same flat channel. What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh.